Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas here at the Matchroom Gym today with the man himself, Mr. Connor Ben. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Very well, very well. Happy New Year to yourself and the family. Um, how was Dubai? Looked looked lush? It was lovely. I was only supposed to arrive for a week and I ended up extending to two uh, when I found out I wasn't flying until a later date. So, done a little bit of training out there. It was nice being in the heat, better than the cold, that's for sure. Yeah, chilly one today in a six. Um, do you get recognised in Dubai? Obviously, I know there's a lot of Brits out there in Dubai, but do you sort of get pulled up quite a lot? Because obviously, I know you do around here and that. But yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. it's it's um, flattering. CB's gone global. Um, just with your next opponent, right? And I was thinking this on the way up here today. It's kind of got to the point where you're one of them fighters who your next opponent is one of the most talked about subjects in boxing. I feel like, like I remember when Joshua had sort of won his world title. It was always like who's next, who's next. And there was a massive hype around who he was going to fight. And I feel like it's that with you. That's kind of one of the most talked about subjects. Do you feel like that? Do you know, if I was white, you'd definitely see me blushing. <laughs> Cheers, Oscar. <laughs> it is, though, isn't it? I feel like it's one of the biggest topics of conversation in British boxing. Is like, who's Conor going to fight next? I don't know. I don't see myself like that. So it's really hard. Um, I was on TalkSport yesterday, and uh, Gareth Davis and Adam Carroll was doing the same thing. I'm just sitting there, and my toes are like, damn, like that. Um, but... Um, I don't know. You ask me if I feel that way. I don't really know. Um, all I know is, um, you know, I'm in the gym training for whoever they put in front of me, and you know, I'm glad there's excitement uh, from the British public. But yeah, um, all I know is I'm working hard, and whoever they put in front of me, I'll, I'll make sure I deal with. Obviously, we had sort of a short list of a couple of names, um, but Maurice Hooker was, I think, Eddie's interview with Coogan. He said they've sort of put an offer to Maurice Hooker's team. Um, is there anything since them couple of days, sort of? Any progression that you know about? No, I don't think that fight will materialise um, at all. Is, is there any sort of reasoning why that won't materialise? Because it was either him or Guerrero, and I know that you was and you said you were leaning towards preferring to fight Hooker. Eddie sent the offer over, so sort of why is that not the... Uh... Just shouting out to the gorilla. Um, I just, I just think um, you know he really had the excuses. I'm a 140 fighter, but he last fought Virgil Ortiz in 147. He can't, he can't even walk around at 140, let alone fight at 140. So I don't think, um, I don't think that fight will materialise for them simple reasons. But at the end of the day, money talks. So you know, listen, I'm, I'm not really fussed. Adrian Broner, um, Keith Furman, Brooke Khan, um, those are the names I mentioned. I mentioned Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia. So, whatever, whoever they put in front of me, I'm, I'm open to fighting. Southport, orthodox, uh, tricky, not tricky, puncher, not puncher, boxer, fighter. It don't really um, make any difference to me, uh, to be honest, because I go into the ring thinking I work hard enough to beat any man. So, it don't really, it don't really concern me. Would I like the Maurice Hooker fight? Robert Guerrero, definitely not. I mean, I definitely don't want that fight. Again, I'll take the fight if... <clears throat> If they really want to make the fight and the fight happens to be, then yeah, of course, I'll fight any man. But I'd rather uh, a younger, fresher fighter, of course. I know this kind of sounds quite weird in a sense because it is your career, but how much of a say in terms of the next opponent will you have? Because I know that you said ideally you want Mikey Garcia or Danny Garcia. Well, surely it should be like, let's get offers out to them then. Yeah. Well, yeah, if there has been or hasn't been, I don't know. Maybe there has been, maybe they don't want the fight. You just don't know. Danny Garcia's moving up. You don't know if Mikey Garcia's moving down. Maybe offers have been made. I don't really um, keep in the loop with all that. At the end of the day, my team know what's best for me. And sometimes, you know, fighters need saving from themselves, so to speak. So far, I've been guided right. So far, they've got me top ranked in every governing body, top five on the fringe of a, you know, a world title fight. So, you know, I'll leave it to them. I trust them to do what they got to do. I focus on doing what I got to do. They trust me to put the work in. I put the work in. I trust them to promote me right. I trust my managers to get the right fight, the right money, the right time, the right venue, the right country. That's their job. So far, they've absolutely nailed it. I nail it in the gym, as, or in other words. Crush it in the gym. Yeah, crush, crush it in the gym. There we go. Um, I remember when we spoke literally 24 hours before the Algeria fight in the hotel when you said about your preparation in preparing for Chris Algeri. Obviously, I've just seen you do a bit of pads and whatnot. Um, but I suppose you're now training not for someone. Like at this point, obviously, I know April as a date is not too, it's not like next week, but you'd want to be training for someone ideally, I suppose. Well, right now, this is the best stage for me. This is where I do all my learning. I haven't got to worry about getting fit, which I am fit, but I haven't got to worry about 
hitting PBs in SNC with the coach Dan Lawrence. Shout out to Perform 365, the best in the game. Have a bit of that. Um, I don't have to worry about getting fit. I don't have to worry about making weight. I don't have to worry about hitting PB numbers. I'm able to just learn, absorb on a full stomach. I ain't got to make no weight. I can learn. I can really absorb it all. And then for the next four weeks, I'll just learn. Work on things I do wrong. Not preparing for anyone specifically. Not working on throwing a certain shot for anyone. Work on the fundamentals. Defense, attack, rhythm, um, variety, shots that I don't throw. There's always room for improvement. School's never out. So I'll work on all them things. And then when I come back um, into sparring, I make sure I execute them. But by the time I get back sparring, it, the movement will become second nature. So therefore, I don't have to think about it. I just do it. And, and then you carry that onto fight night. But this stage for me is really important. This is where most fighters slack. I'll work and I'll make sure I do what needs to be done to make me a better all-round fighter. Not for the opponent, but an all-round. Remember, we're building. You know, when I've, when I've stacked and built my whole career, it's not been necessarily for that individual person, but to become the more overall complete fighter in the end goal. I don't know if this is something you've mind a bit public knowledge or not, but I'll ask you anyway. What do you walk around that then? You say you're doing this all on a full stomach. What do you weigh? Because I saw you weighing yourself. I didn't want to sort of intrude and walk over, but what are you weighing right now as you, as you train? That is so contradicting. You've just got... No, no, because no, no, I thought no, like, no, look... No, 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 no. Listen, I'll hold the mic. You've gone, you've gone, <laughs> you've gone. Remember what we said, no silly questions. Oh, my face is... <laughs> What you said was, I didn't want to come over there and intrude, but I'll just ask you on IFL TV. That is so contradicting. Do you not think? You're not, you're not wrong, Conor Ben. No, but you're only saying you're taking the mic. That was such a sarcastic. Here, to have the mic back. Can I ask what you, what I walk, around. What, what you walk around with? Um, so it's like stages. So the first two weeks after a fight, I, I probably... Kilos or stones? Pounds. All right, pounds. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a modern boxing fan. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll probably walk around that one. John, what's 70, 73, 74 kg in pounds? Yeah, so walk around 160. Uh, what's 75, John? 160. 175, 75 kgs, 160. About that, isn't it? Yeah, so maybe 163, 164. But then I, um, and then I drop it right back down to like 157, 158. Like now I'm 157. And then, but the first two weeks I'm like eating what I want. And I go up to about 163, 164 tops. And then I'll get back down to now 157. And therefore, I ain't really got much to lose. I know, obviously, this is not for now. This is just, uh, again, just a question I just pulled off the top of my head. Have you ever thought about potentially that you would ever have to move up in weight? Or if, if you sort of, because of the stage of where you're at now and the way you've trained, and it's not like you're going to hit your man strength, you've got it. So do you ever think about needing potentially to move up in a few years? I definitely will move up, one million percent. I'll definitely move up to, uh, like, middle, 100 million percent. It goes without saying. Yes, I'm walking between middleweight and super middle. So, light middle definitely are um, planning in the future, 100 million percent. I don't struggle with getting down to 147. But then maybe I do. To me, I don't. But then to others, mate, go, yeah, you do. But then when I hear about other people's weight cuts and what they have to do, I think, mate, right, that's like me getting down to light water. Yeah, so you don't have to do any of the last minute towel, sauna, bath. No, and if I did that's a sign when you that's a sign you need to move up if you're yeah, doing it, I suppose, isn't it? If I did it, it'd be over a pound or two. Like on fight week I like to be four pound over, five pound tops. If that. And I mean that's after eating, that's in the morning. It's not even cutting out fluid. I think weight making weight is so important and so many people forsake it, but nutrition is so important. You never see heavyweights have, you know, you know, near death experiences because of weight cut. And you know, you surely you think eight and a half stone eating you in the chin, you're gonna have some sort of brain problem. They yeah, don't. But us lighter weights who you know, deplete our bodies. If you don't do your weight right, you know, it's you know, it's, you're risking your health.
All right, I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but I did just kind of, I know what he's walking around like, yeah. Um, about the here and now, uh, it's Wiggs, obviously, like I said, you've been in Dubai, and I think that was when it was sort of, that might have been when Eddie done that interview with Umar, or it might have been just when you come back, I don't know, about Avanisi, and then Warren has responded as well. David hasn't really said anything. You haven't really said anything. You might have said a little bit in another interview. But is it weird for you? Because the main comments are kind of coming from the two promoters on each side, and not you and David. I don't, I don't really care, do you know what I mean? When I wanted to fight for the British title, offer Jenkins the biggest purse he's ever got in his life, you know, by you know, near enough five times the amount. And Warren didn't want to let that fight happen. So I couldn't fight for the British title, which is something we really tried really hard to do. And all we was doing is firing dates from our side all the time. So I ain't going to do Warren no favours. He's only signed up in this year and on the back of me, me fighting him. I haven't seen him call anyone else's name out. But then again, it's him and his team's job to make him the most money he can, which is fighting myself. But if the shoe was on the other foot, would they do the same for me? No. So I ain't bending over backwards to fight one of your fighters that you've signed on the back of hoping that me and him fight. You know, and begging for the 500 grand purse and all that. I ain't have no interest in 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 doing more than any favours. So, you know, I'll leave that to my team. My team got me in a great position. I'm top five in every governing body. You know, Avanesi is really in the in the Who Needs Him club. Is it one of them now where we just have to sort of put it to bed? Look, you and David aren't going to fight now, or it, it looks like you're, well, you're not going to fight in the near future. Let's put it that way. You don't know, mate. You know, from my perspective, if he wins an eliminator in a world title, then well, yeah. Well, then, or I'd fight him for a final eliminator. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd fight him for a world title, final eliminator. You know, but fortunate. Well, unfortunately for him, I'd rather fight a Ugas Porter. Um, you know, Spence. Cro I'd rather fight one of them names, the big names in the Ameri in in America. You know, that's down to me. Warren wants to go. Yeah, he's a big name and all that. Well, maybe to you, not to me. So, and and and, and as it stands, it matters what we think, not what you think. You know. So, you know, and that, that's that. I know you said you sort of don't want to do any favours for Warren. You kind of see it in a bit of a way as like a, a bit of a pride thing as well. Obviously, look, Matram and Queensbury, two different promotional things. It's like kind of, you, you want to stand your ground. And I feel Eddie probably feels the same. You want to stand your ground and be like, no, we're not going to agree to something. Agree there's, to your terms. The, the difference is there's a million routes I can go. I have plenty of paydays are left ahead of me. He don't. That's why he's calling my name when he should be calling for Errol Spence, Crawford, um, you guys, he should be calling for them, but no, why is he calling for me? It's a money grab. That's all it is. So, you know, they want to pretend like all this and that. And no, mate, I ain't doing you no favours. I've got enough paydays. I've got a million paydays. And if people want to go, oh, yeah, but, you know, you're ducking having this. And look at our records. My 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th fight. Look at mine. Look at his. You know, so I ain't in a rush to find him and I, I don't have no interest. I wouldn't do him no favours. And as far as the beef with Queensbury and Matron, I ain't involved in that, like in the slightest. Let them guys beef, you know. I've got enough beef on my plate as it is. Do you know what I mean? I'm vegetarian, by the way. So I don't like all the beef and all that. So, you know, that's where that stands. But then, Felix, you put me off, mate. I was on a run. I was on a good run there. No, I don't even know. I don't even know. You, you stuck me now. I'm like, go on, what was the question again? No, I was on a roll when you were. He's done me. We nearly had one of them clips again where it was like you getting into. Uh, you was just getting into that sort of crushing yeah, it in the gym mode. No, no, I think I know where I was. Hold on. Yeah, sorry. No, stop. I ain't doing this to you, mate. <laughs> the long and the short of it is you're vegetarian. Yeah. You don't need any of that. I don't, yeah, I don't need none of that in my life. But what I'm annoyed about is they didn't let me fight for the British title, which I would have loved to have won. So, and Eddie's going, God, you know, it's a lot of money we're paying him. You know, it's a lot, a lot of money. And it was a lot, a lot of money. But, you know, Warren didn't let his fighter fight, which I was quite shocked about, to be honest, because you would let your fighter fight for that sort of money. He didn't want to. So, you know, we push. I wasn't going to wait around for him. I'm at, you know, prime stages in my career where this is really important years in my career. I wasn't going to wait around to fight for Jenkins because at the end of the day, how many paydays he got left in him? Now, probably near none. So, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Let my team do all that, all the politics, the opponents. I don't even worry about it. I don't lose no sleep over that. At the end of the day, we train to beat any man. And the better the opponent, the, the happier I am. Just one more thing on that. And you said about your record um, up to your fights now. Stay and David's there. at the same Stay stage. There. Go on. Do you know what I was going to say, right? 
is that the blessing and a curse of having the career and the career path no. you've had so far? Because so. because he because he at that stage would have been more unknown than you, so there wouldn't have been a push for David Avenisian in his 17th fight to fight someone of that level. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. So it's like a yeah. All right, 17th fight. 17th fight. 13 fights, lost four. 18th fight, 24 fights. 24 fights, lost five. Then 25, lost 10. 18, lost 12. 22, lost 16. And then he fought Dean Burton, 17, lost four. So then you're talking about me fighting Sebastian Formella, X, Y, Z, do you know what I mean? So it's like, I ain't doing him no, no favours at all. You know, but if you want to do comparisons, I'm progressing at a rapid rate. I ain't in a rush for nothing, you know. People wanted me to fight Kelbrook after my second, third fight, you know. And they didn't want to give me room, allow me to progress. They wanted to rush me. I don't need to rush. The big fights will come. The hard fights will come. It's inevitable. And the hard fights are what I want. That's why I work so hard. All right, Colin, just quickly saying that I know you want to clear up. You put a statement out anyway, but you were removed from the WBC rankings because of the clean boxing program, but pretty simple, you've signed up to it and you're going to be, well, hopefully reinstated in, was it the top the top five? Yeah, I will be, it's bollocks, the whole thing. I was in Did you not have, you didn't have any notice about no, this? No. You were just pulled from there, yeah? No notice whatsoever, so and that sort of pissed me off a little bit, because it's like the way they've just gone about it, really pissed me off, you know, but then, oh, I could go in, but then, you know, it's like, it's just frustrating because then, you know, Oscar Valdez test positive for a bad substance and they allow him to fight, so and then it's like, what, is it really a clean boxing programme then? But then they want to, you know, I'm getting all fired at from saying, oh, you ain't signed up to VADA. I don't have to sign up to VADA if I don't want to, number one. Number two, I will, just but to clear all this rubbish up. Number three, I'm tested regularly by UK anti-doping. You know, but the press are going to pick up on whatever they, rubbish they want to pick up on. You know, to be fair, I'm probably going to go the WBA route anyway. So it's just, it's just frustrating. You know, they could have at least given me notice or at least said, oh, if you don't sign this by this date, you know, we'll drop you out of the ranking. Or whatever it is. I come back from Dubai. What are you saying, John? <laughs> I'm are you no, but you've ruined it though. Again. We had him, we had him going, boys. We had him going. For fuck's sake! Is it just, is it just sort of like the way it was done? It makes it yeah, look worse. No. It makes it look like oh, is Connor doing something dodgy? That's what it makes it look like when you just pull someone out. Well, listen, it's flattering to be honest, because I mean, if anyone thinks you know I'm on steroids, that is such a comp. That's, that's a compliment. You and you got, you got to take it that way. It's not nice, but I mean, you got to take it that way. But it's just one of them things, man. You know, I will sign up to VADA, although I don't think I'm going to go to WBC route anyway. I will sign up to VADA, just clear all this rubbish up. Uh, but as far as it goes for, for the clean boxing program, it's very contradicting. And, um, you know, the irony of it, when they allow a fighter who tested positive to fight the same week after testing positive for a banned substance, like, mental. But listen, we move. Um, I'm tested regularly by UK and Doping, just to clear that up. Um, I tested positive for um, crushing it in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, just quickly on Michael McKinson and well, the gym was going to fall down. Michael McKinson and um, Virgil Ortiz. Credit to Michael McKinson um, for taking this fight because it is a fight that a lot of people in the division wouldn't want to take, especially at, I don't know. He's well ranked with WBO. And there's other routes he could have gone. Um, Virgil Ortiz is knocking people out. Um, so I say credit to Michael, but really good fight actually. I don't know, a really good fight. I suppose from the perspective of looking at, you've got an undefeated Englishman, undefeated American, loads of hype about the American Englishman going over to his place. If you're looking at it like that. I mean, oh. what's going to happen in the ring? I don't know, because it's two very different styles. But. Well, 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 you say, I don't know what's going to happen. Nothing, you know, 100% carry ratio from... Um, Virgil Ortiz is a telltale sign to, you know, 99.5% likely that will happen again. The only problem is, the only thing I worry about, I hope McKinson wins, but the only thing I worry about is there's no measuring stick as to who he's fought to do comparisons to world level of opponents. Now, the reason we pick the opponents we pick, such as uh, Formella, who just come off the loss of Granados, uh, Vargas, Algeri, is we can do the comparisons. It's a measuring stick to you know, world level of opponents. They're, you said they're fringe world level, well, I, Sebastian Formella and um, Algeria former world champions. You can use that as a measuring tool. 
his opponents, his best wins are against Congo, who won't beat Luther Clay, which wasn't a great fight. And then he beat um, that Ranowski, who Josh Kelly beat with ease. So when you do the comparisons, there is none to world level of opponents. So when you're talking Virgil Ortiz, you're talking a savage, you're talking someone who's, you know, in my opinion, could potentially be pound for pound once Crawford, Spence um, move up. I even, you know, fancy him a little bit now against uh, the likes of names. So it's a hard fight, it's a ballsy move. Fair play to him for taking the fight. Massive risk, but, you know, it's a win-win situation. Um, you know, if he gives him a tough fight, it's a win-win. I was going to say, I've heard you say before about winning and winning in boring fashion and sort of stumbling over the line and sometimes losing, but being in a fight where you've sort of credited yourself or even a fight of the year contender or something like that. So there is a possibility and, you know, I know a lot of people favour Virgil Ortiz and you don't want to overlook Michael McKinson, but there is a way that he can come out, even if he is defeated, you can still come out with your stock yeah. risen massively from a fight like that. Well, he hasn't done before. So I don't think it will happen now. I mean, stylistically, he's very negative, not fan friendly. And you know what? The American crowd are ruthless, you know. Like they do all the booings and all that. If it's a boring fight, they'll, they give, they don't, they're letting know about it. Me and percent, I've gone to so many American fights, they go, boo, they're booing. And I'm thinking, mate, what, why are you booing for? But, you know, if it's a boring fight, we'll get all that. A million percent. They're not like the British crowd who just sit quietly and, no, no, they'll boo me. Yeah, I'll let you know about it. All right, Connor, thank you very much for giving me some of your time today. 22 minutes. Sorry. I, was, I, was just, I wanted to be 41, but uh, <laughs> I know where we stand. Um, Connor, it's, top man. It's the interviewer, it's not me. Sorry, Oscar. I thought we had a good like, rapport going on, though. No? Like, Coogan would have got 41 out of you, wouldn't he? No, every day of the week, twice on a Sunday. Crushing it.